Hello everybody, so today we're going to mess around with watercolours again and we're going to try out some experimental techniques as well. We're going to be, I'm going to be painting this imaginary landscape to show you how you can apply these techniques but it's another excuse to play. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually just go through the weird and wonderful stuff we're going to use today. Um, <clears throat> so here we have uh, salt, rock salt. If you can see, it's just rock salt. You want the lumpy stuff because they make uh, it works better. Uh, we're going to try out masking fluid, which is generally all part of a watercolorist kit. And I'm going to show you how to use that. Um, <coughs> I've got some alcohol. Well, you can use gin or vodka, but this is actually surgical spirit. That does something weird. But whether or not you can actually find use for it is another matter. Um, and I've got my uh, palette knife, which is useful. We're going to do some splattering with a toothbrush. Uh, we're going to use a candle or for wax resist. In fact, you can actually buy this specialized crayon uh, <coughs> at vast expense, which is the same effect. And uh, I also have my magic sponge eraser, which you can buy, you used to be able to buy it in the pound shop, but uh, you can buy them online. Um, they don't last very long, but they're very good at erasing bits of watercolor. So I'll show you how that works. And uh, we're just going to do some playing and create different effects. So I've got one here, what I did earlier. Uh, so this is cling film on uh, a wet wash. This is what the surgical spirit does. It's a little bit different from vodka. Um, it actually, uh, what alcohol does, it breaks down the surface layer of the watercolor and does this weird thing, making it look like coronavirus. There you go. Uh, this is wax. This is salt and this is gouging. So we're going to try out each technique in turn and just have fun again. But the first thing I'm going to do is actually find my, ah, oh, here we are, find my <coughs> preparation for this little imaginary landscape. It's a little boat in an imaginary Lulworth Cove. And what I'm going to do here is just apply some masking fluid. So here's my masking fluid, uh, which is basically rubber cement uh, uh, copy decks. And one useful thing uh, about applying masking fluid is, uh, is to use soap because it does have this terrible tendency to ruin brushes, it being a glue and all. So here's a little bar of soap. I'm just going to go on uh, with my brush. I'm using a rigger. I find them very useful for putting on masking fluid because it doesn't mess up the brushes. It doesn't get up here. And once you've got glue here, your brush is ruined. So I'm just putting a little layer of soap on there. And I'm going to pick up my masking fluid, uh, which is soluble in water. And I'm just going to paint my little boat. So here we are. I've got a little boat in Lulworth Cove. And I'm just going to put on this masking fluid. I'm doing this now because you have to wait for it to dry. With masking fluid, you have to wait for every little bit to dry. And as you can see, it's a bit gloopy. So it's quite hard to do uh, sort of fine shapes. There are makes a masking fluid that um, it come with a needle, but that generally gets bunged up pretty sharpish. So I'm just putting it on the bit I want to reserve as white. And I'm just applying it. And what happens is it resists uh, the watercolor wash. Oh, I'm getting blobs everywhere. And you peel it off <clears throat> once your wash is dry. So you don't have to paint round things. Quite good for doing daisies in a field. You can have a bit of splatter in and just do the bottom of the boat. And you can dilute it, which is probably what I should have done. Oops. So I'm just looking where it is and let's hope it works. And failing that, I can always attack it with white gouache at the end of the process. Woo. So I'm just going to put that aside, rinse my brush and just put that aside to dry and we'll come back and paint uh, <coughs> that later. So let's try out something rather groovy. So um, I just want to show you how to make clouds, which is very useful, and how to lay on a big wash. This is often the hardest thing that people find um, to do. So the way to lay on a big wash is take a big brush and actually uh, wet the paper. So where's my big brush? There it is. So I'm just going to wet this paper and what you can do actually is spray it but I'm going to just go over with a big brush, wet this paper 
like that and then mix up a whole bunch of wash this paper is slightly used but <coughs> this is just an exercise so I'm going to go on with a whole big wash so I've got my lovely blues here and mixing up a big puddle of the Shevington blue um, you can use cerulean blue Prussian blue anything so you can see that the wash goes on very smoothly because the paper is wet and I once painted a five foot long watercolor uh, <coughs> landscape which uh, was a bit of a task I can tell you but you have to be quick don't worry about the street so I'm just picking up a little bit more down here and bring it up and again this is the value of having a lot of wash mixed up so I'm not going to worry about the streaks too much or oh, maybe I need a bit more wash there because uh, don't worry about little bits I'm worrying about little bits too much because um, the water should uh, take care of that for you and if you start fiddling you're moving around the pigment on the paper <clears throat> and that makes uh, uh, the watercolours go to hell in handbasket. So with watercolours, the motto is do not fiddle. So here we are. So I've got a nice wet wash. I'm going to make a cloud. So all I've got is my nice plenty kitchen towel. And I can make fluffy clouds. You have to do this while it's wet. Um, and you have to press quite hard. So here we are, another fluffy cloud. Woo, hey, they're rather good, aren't they? Right. <clears throat> So there we are, clouds, and you can go in and add different, um, uh, that's a more form to your clouds. I think oh, that's a bit of an odd shape, so I'm just going in there. So there we are, clouds. And another technique we're going to use when we're painting our seascape is using wax. Uh, so you can use a white candle, um, and uh, so that works perfectly fine. And I'm just going to go across the trouble with wax, although it has quite a nice effect, it's, it's absolutely impossible to tell what you've done. So another technique for C is actually something called dry brush, which I will show you. Um, so that wax has t uh, made a resist. You can actually use oil pastels for that. So I'm just going to pick up a colour for the C. Maybe I'll go for that one. And a little bit of that. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Just gorgeous. Um, but unfortunately this is wet so I'm just going to leave that for the moment and I'm just going to go along here and you can see where the wax has resisted. Let's get another colour up shall we? Whoops. Can you see? So that's where the wax was but it's almost impossible to tell where it is, where, it, where you actually applied it. But another way of um, actually making a nice seascape is actually using something called dry brush. I think those are fingerprints that are left over. So uh, dry brush, so I've actually used quite a lot of wash. I can just go backwards and forwards and you can see the paint is running out on the brush. So that works quite well for a sparkly sea. And the way to do dry brush is so I rinse my brush, I will dry my brush, I will pick up the wash and then I will dry it on here and then have a test piece of paper around so you can see how uh, how much paint is on the wash. But that works just as well as the wax. <clears throat> the wax has its place, um, but it is so hard to use. And once you've used it, you cannot take it off. Uh, um, so uh, that's one technique we will be using. Um, oops. And then I got some smaller bits of paper here. I just want to show you salt, which does some very groovy things. And it's a good idea to play with this technique because you don't know what it's going to turn out like. I found that the best way to do it was to have, um, <clears throat> I've lost my brush, uh, was to have quite a wet wash. So I'm just going to go on here, picking up this lovely blue and have a really wet wash. So I'm just going to get that wash on there with a big brush, lots of water. Yeah. Needs more water. Water, 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 water. And then I'm going to pick up some rock salt and throw it at it. Um, I have seen people use table salt, but I find that doesn't really work so well. So with the wet wash, these are just imperfections, I think from fingerprints or something. Uh, that have come through, but never mind. So that's the grease in your fingerprints actually resisting the wash. So here we have our salt. 
I hope that wash is wet enough. I'm just going to put it on here and it should create some very nice snowflake shapes. I don't know if that's wet enough. Um, you can get uh, <coughs> quite a nice effect just creating a little bit more texture. Uh, but obviously I'm going to need that to dry. So what's happening is the uh, salt is sucking out the water from the uh, the wash and will create little snowflake light shapes. So I've got to leave that to dry and uh, we'll come back in about 10 minutes and shake off the salt and hope it's worked. I wonder if that is going to work. Right. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is cling film. Um, I did it earlier with this nice magenta color which works very well. So I'm just going to clean my brush, get some clean water and pick up this nice, mag this is quinacridone uh, magenta and I'm just going to put it on here like this and then you just put the cling film on there. It's a very useful way of creating texture particularly with rocks and things like that because it um, uh, it affects how the watercolor dries. And where, uh, well, I will show you in a sec, let's get this covered. And I've got to make sure it's still wet. Grab some cling film, and I'm just going to put it on here, and you can, to some extent, shape it, but not madly. But you have to wait for it to dry. You can see it's already had an effect, but if I left that, all the paint would spread out. So I'm just going to create some shapes and textures and see how that works. So again, I've got to wait at least 10 minutes for that to dry to show you how the shapes and the textures work. Um, another useful technique is uh, gouging, uh, which is quite nice for grass and bits like that. So another little bit of paper. And as I say, this is just a lovely, another lovely excuse to play, which I'm going to use this one. Uh, uh, so what you want for this is a palette knife. Here we are, a palette knife. And again, I'm going to put on a wash. I'm going to use this green gold, maybe a bit of other green. Green gold. Oh, that's such a lovely color. This is one of, I think it's got quinacridone uh, go, um, gold in it. This is quinacridone gold. Whoa, look at that. Yum, 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 yum. And actually, I might put a bit of darker green knocking around. So you can create, again, texture with a palette knife. So any sort of hard metal object will do this. I wonder if a credit card would, it might do. So you can actually push the wash away and it will stay like that. Um, <clears throat> so all these techniques take practice, so it's worth having a good old play around with them. But you can actually create these nice textures. Can you see it's pushing away the wash? And ruining the paper a bit. So that's a very a nice fun technique and another uh, nice technique is spraying and that works well uh, when you're doing foliage so for instance if I was doing a tree uh, <coughs> so I'm going to use this very nice dark perylene green and so put quite a lot of wet wash on there and pretend I'm doing a pine tree uh, and what you can do, you can use spray. So all these techniques um, require practice and require playing. Uh, that Jean Haynes has quite a nice uh, video, I think through Jackson's art, of painting for the bin. She's quite an expressive free watercolorist. And just to have that idea that you're not doing anything madly momentous or great work of art, uh, to uh, just be able to play with it. So here we are, here's a pine tree and I could, hopefully I can buck up uh, some of the areas of foliage by just spraying. So I always find with spraying I overdo it. So I'm just going to go a little bit in there and you're getting, ah, I'm overdoing it. Can you see? So you get these nice little shapes that you can create and then you get weird and wonderful things happening over there. So what I might do, I'm going to have a bit of a fiddle, which is bad. Just going to put some more uh, watercolour on there. It's quite strong watercolour, this. Uh, so this is from a tube, so it's really oomphy. 
And that's obviously where I didn't spray it so much, but you're getting these really nice peculiar shapes. There we go. Oops. Maybe I'll do a bit more. Sorry, I'm enjoying it now. Uh, <coughs> right. Woo. So I'm just going to do a spray there. Oh, too much. Yeah. So you get, uh, so the watercolor is actually following the area, um, the uh, it, the water you've put on with the spray. So again, that takes practice and just messing around can be fun. Oh, look, I'm going to fiddle. Eek. Don't fiddle. So that's a nice technique. Um, I just want to show you a couple of books, actually, uh, where these uh, techniques come into. The, you get these lovely new styles of watercolour coming up. So this is quite a cunning one, how to make a watercolour paint itself. So she uses a lot of these techniques to help her watercolours, using mask in here, for instance, and this is wax, and then she uses cling film, and then she kind of throws things at things, uses a spray. Um, so it's quite a nice book to uh, to follow some of her techniques. So you can see here, she's got a lovely idea of foliage and she's used salt here to create texture and all sorts of other weird and wonderful things. So that's a good book. It's an American book, but it's called How to Make a Watercolor Paint, it, Paint Itself, uh, Nita Ingle. Another lovely book is uh, this one, Experimental Landscapes. And again, she uses a lot of techniques, uh, cling film and uh, I don't know, all sorts of other things. So here you are showing different things. So applying, uh, 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 being able to play. So this is uh, yeah, watercolor on gesso. This is messing around. So just messing around with watercolor. Isn't that just lovely? And it's the luminosity of watercolor that will bring this to you. So there's a bit of cling film, a bit of gouging, some strings, some masking fluid, sandpaper I think she uses. And again, here we are, cling film, just to create instant textures. And quite a nice thing to do with cling film is um, to sort of do a cling film exercise and then see what you can see in the image you have created. I did one here earlier. Uh, so I was very inspired by a uh, face in a rock that was on a BBC program. So this is cling film, this was just left, this is salt, so you get all these lovely textures. There's different colored washes in here, so you're creating all this texture quite easily, but you have to go with what you've created. You cannot um, control it very well. Ugh, that's on top of my masking fluid. Right, okay. <clears throat> um, and then, I will see, I'll just show you a couple of other examples to give my masking fluid a little time to dry. So here we are, this is a, a, a sort of bunch of rocks on the south coast somewhere. And again here, so what I've done, I've created texture and it was a rock formation that went that way. So I can actually use cling film to actually make those shapes and then leaving these areas. So that was quite good. And then this is uh, just a little sketch. It's kind of heather on a hillside. And you can see here the salt has made the texture here in the foreground. But it was just a little exercise. So it's just little bits of watercolor paper like this. Just mess around, just have fun. So now we're going to see if my masking fluid's dry. Is it dry? I think so. Let's have a look. And I've got a few blobs here. With masking fluid, you can just rub it off with your finger. So now we're going to create our nice watercolor landscape. And what I'm going to do is actually uh, paint the sky and add some clouds. So here we are. This is my sky color. Ooh, well, it's got some green in it see what color that is. A little bit on the green side. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit more of the blue and have a test piece of paper with you so you can actually see what colors you're making. Um, yeah, that's probably it. So to make my clouds, I'm going to, whoa, well, this should be clean water. So I'm just going to go over this make it wet so the watercolour will actually smoothly go on and I can paint right over my boat. So there you are, a nice wet piece of paper and then I can just pick up that wash and float it on. So I'm picking up the wash, actually now I think about it, you should use one of those hake brushes. Let me grab my hake brush. So a brush like this 
um, which I think they sell in shops, so I can see if that works. Woo, that go, whoa, that's better. So that can go on nice and smoothly. So I'm just making sure that wash goes on reasonably smoothly. Just, and I'm fiddling. Okay, I <clears throat> um, just want to get that little bit there. Da, 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 da. Just paint straight over my boat and realize I've fiddled. So I'm just going to grab my watercolor brush and I'm just going to go and hopefully tidy that up. Okay, so I'm hoping the water's going to do the work for me. Meanwhile, I want to create some clouds. And I'm just going to go in here, press quite hard, nice fluffy clouds, moving my kitchen towel around to create different shapes. I saw some nice clouds the other day, actually, yesterday when it was sunny. Like those Chinese clouds over the sea. So I'm just going to go here. Oops, that's a bit square. don't like that shape, so I'm going to move my kitchen towel around and have a good old press. Maybe another one there. <laughs> okay, and then, uh, so I've created my clouds, I'm going to leave those alone, and what I can do, I can actually add some more interest in them later, uh, like the bit more of their shape. No, don't fiddle, don't fiddle, really don't fiddle. Now, this is slightly wet, I think that will be alright, let's see how that goes. It's a question of letting uh, watercolours um, washes dry in between um, and I'm just going to go and pick up a nice sea colour. Let's try that one. Whoa, crumbs. That's a bit on the dark side. Whoa, isn't it just? So I'm going to dilute that down a bit. And again, I just want to see what colour it is. That will probably do. Oh, wax. I was going to put some wax on. So I'm going to use my fancy crayon. And I'm just going to do a few straight across straight across. You never know what it's going to turn out like. And then I'm going to combine that with some dry brush. So again, nice big brush. Let's go in there, get my horizon right. I can paint straight over my boat. Uh, oh god, I've got the sea with the hill of it. All right, I'm just raising the horizon level. Okay, so in this case, I'm not wetting it. I'm just using a big brush because it holds a lot of wash. And you can see the wax coming through. And I just want to go down here, down here, down here. And then I'm going to go into dry brush, I think. So that's a little bit more wax. And then I'm going to have some dry brush, which I think is actually more effective, but I did want to show you the wax. And then with C, what I find quite useful is to go over it again once it's dry to create um, uh, some more ripples in your sea. So here, so that's me kind of, me waves on the shore. And what I'm going to do here is soften this edge with water like that so we get a nice kind of surf kind of feel so we don't have a harsh line in between them and I'm fiddling don't fiddle and then we got the underneath of the wave here and what you can also do and again I'm going to soften that edge just with water and I can also use kitchen towel to make my waves more interesting foam and things and then I really want to soften that edge a bit more and I'm going to use my kitchen towel to just go in there and take some of the excess away that will probably be all right I'm fiddling and then I'm just going to grab some yellow ochre which I had here somewhere here we are, a little bit of yellow ochre. Whoa, it's green. I've got blue on my brush. A little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm going to paint me sand. There we go, sand. And 
and I think that will probably do. I'm just going to dilute that a bit. Oh, but my water is now blue. So this is trouble with um, not having clean water. So there we are. And then I'm going to soften this edge with more water. So I don't want a harsh edge there. Whoa. Right. So there we are. Bit of sand. Whoa. Fiddling. Don't fiddle. Right. And then, oh, I think I might take it up there. No, no, I'm fiddling. Uh, that's quite a good maxim. Uh, when every single time you make a mark, it makes it worse. Stop. Uh, <clears throat> and now I'm going to do some splattering with some t a toothbrush. I've got here a toothbrush. And I've got here some brown. And I'm going to apply that to a wet wash. So I'm just going to grab a piece of paper to use it as a sort of mask. Oh, well, I've got a blob there, but don't worry about it. This is just a demonstration. Oh, look what's happening there. All sorts of weird things. So, just a little bit of splattering on my uh, on my wet wash here to create a little bit of texture. Ooh. Right, that's gone weird. Um, so I'm just going to see what I can do with that. I'm going to add a bit more yellow ochre just here. And it's wet, so what I might do, yeah, I'm getting involved with the painting now, is um, I'm going to spray this a little bit, see if I can get that pigment to, whoa, spread out a bit more, whoa, yay, I might leave it at that, I probably won't though, knowing me, I'm just going to pick up a li little bit more yellow ochre, and drop some in here and there. Oh, I'm fiddling. Don't fiddle. Don't fiddle. And uh, what I can also do is add a little bit of salt here. I don't know where I put it. Ah, salt. To, again, create a little bit more texture within that. So it saves a lot of bother if you can actually master these techniques of adding, um, uh, sort of using these techniques to actually add things to your painting and then uh, have an experiment to see if it's going to work and paint for the bin. Now, <sighs> sorry I'm in this world, oh there it is. I've got a nice colour which is um, nice and dark and cool. This is sepia, if you can see it. It's, uh, well, it's from uh, squid ink basically. I don't think they use, still use squid but you never know. And it's this nice, cool, dark colour. And I'm going to paint the cliffs. So over here, um, where's my smaller brush? Here we are. So I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush, mix up a nice wash, dark wash of sepia. And then I'm going to think of Lulworth Cove. And I want it to be quite dark. That's not dark enough. So we're going up here, thinking about Lulworth Cove. Actually, I might throw a little bit more Payne's Grey in there. So we want it to be rocky, 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 rocky. And with watercolour, you can see here, I can paint dark over light. That is the cardinal rule of watercolour. Watercolour is quite difficult because you have to plan your painting uh, so that you can reserve the light areas. You paint the light areas first and then you paint the dark areas around that. And that often means that you're painting in reverse. Like if you want to paint a bush, you can paint uh, sort of a whole wave of uh, foliage, uh, but you can paint the lightest one first and then you can actually describe leaves by painting around the leaf. That's why watercolour is so fiendish. Just like that. So that's a nice wet wash of um, <coughs> uh, sepia. And then I'm going to pick up some paints grey and just go in with some of that because I want some darker areas. And then I can just get a nice fine yeah, rock over there. Actually, I might do something weird, which is just grab a bit of yellow ochre. And again, this is from a tube, but you can just show you what you can get with some of the yellows are opaque 
and you can see it's actually repelling some some of the wash there so you're getting quite a nice technique with just that but now I'm going to apply some cling film and I'm going to just apply it here in a rocky way and you try and get some texture in there if I go that way where the cling film's touching uh, the paper it creates nice weird shapes and things but where it's not touching the paper you'll get lighter areas so I can see what's happening there I hope that's gonna work and again I've got to leave that 10 minutes to dry <coughs> and then I can come back and peel my boat off so this is just a nice simple exercise um, that you can apply to uh, just mess around with really and it's not complicated but just to learn how the paint works and how masking fluid works um, so where's my previous bits previous bits are oh, here we are so here we have the salt and can you see that what it's done is create this lovely kind of snowflakey effect if you want to paint snowflakes that's the way to go but I would suggest you have a practice I'm just going to and you can see all the salt falls off oops that's still a bit wet so you should let it dry longer but you can see it's created these beautiful little shapes up there and uh, uh, it's uh, very good for just adding basic texture and the cling film is probably dry now let's have a look at that here we go cling film so again uh, we're getting so where uh, it wasn't touching the paper you get this pure wash but where it was touching the paper you can see that it's create this weird effect and then quite a nice thing to do is actually look at this and see what shapes you can see in there oh I can see a fish and then sort of uh, add more paint to um, uh, describe what you can see so if I just grab a little brush um, and then you can actually paint over that. So if I went in here, ooh, I can see a fish. I'm just going to go over this and see if I can define my fish. Can you see it? Can you see what it is yet? Which perhaps I catchphrase I should not do, but that's quite a really nice, fun little exercise. Can you see? So we could have a nice tail and a fin. Uh, so again, uh, just a nice little weird exercise you can do with watercolour. And it's giving you this permission to play, permission to paint for the bin. Everything you do doesn't have to be perfect. You can just enjoy it. And through uh, sort of these creative exercises, other creative ideas will come to you. So it's worth having a go. So, and what you can also do is drip. Ooh, perhaps if I put some more paint on and some more water I could get it to drip more whoa splat 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 and again it's kind of breaking down uh, uh, the, the surface tension of the water whoa wow it's got a crest now oh, where's my alcohol this is actually surgical spirit uh, so I could actually whoa cool you can drop that in Whoa, and it makes just lovely shapes. So I would suggest you play with your favorite colors and see what happens. Whoa, the surgical spirit actually does affect the paper a bit, but it does create interesting shapes. And I'm just going to, and I have, always have kitchen towel about your person, so I could actually blot some of this off. Oh, I can give it spines. Um, so yes just have fun that's gone really weird I really like that um, so I'm just waiting for my wash to dry so I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, other paintings that I managed to use these techniques with this is a little bit of Scotland um, it's Etiv Moor Etiv Mount Etiv I think and there's this lovely waterfall here so with this painting what I did was uh, use so this is basically conventional watercolor more or less this is a lot of wet in wet which is good fun and here we've got uh, wax although hard to see wax that um, 
repels the water so there's bits of wax here there's cling film here can you see there's a couple of different kinds of washes and a bit of salt as well to add more texture and then you can go back in and define some salient points like these rocks so this was very effective I think and quite popular and yet I still have it but never mind I'll just see how my seascapes going which I think will take a little while longer to dry um, definitely so here we are it's been about 10 minutes or a bit longer and uh, so hopefully all this is dry so I'm going to now develop this painting and I'm just going to peel off my cling film and you see I've got a nice strata of rocks there and I'm going to start tweaking it to make it look more like a proper painting. And I'll show you how the masking fluid works. Actually, before I dirty up my water, I just want to show you the magic sponge eraser, uh, <coughs> which is this thing. Uh, it's actually sold as a cleaning product as the magic sponge eraser. You can clean your oven with it. But it's made of a, a quite a fine foam, which does disintegrate over time. And, uh, but it doesn't harm the paper too much. I mean, you could use a Brillo pad, but that would really ruin the paper. Um, so here we are. So I'm just wetting the sponge in clean water and I'm just gonna rub here. And you can see that that takes off a lot of wash. So if you made a mistake, you can actually raise it. Don't go crazy now because it does affect the surface of the paper a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but they don't last very long, so I advise you, I think it's SAA cell 4, and they work quite well. So you can use that to sort of uh, correct mistakes and then repaint them, um, and you can also use uh, something, Daniel Smith's gesso, which I did have some, I think it's upstairs, uh, gesso, which you can also paint over watercolours with. Uh, if you're correcting your mistakes. Uh, gouache works quite well as well if you re need to refine white. But meanwhile, back to our imaginary Lulworth Cove. So I'm just going to get rid of the salt, which is here. My whole studio is covered in salt at the moment. I must have a vacuum. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to develop the sea a little bit. I want to go in and um, put some more definition in the cliffs. Uh, put some more ripples in the sea and maybe develop the clouds. So I'm just going to grab a brush, maybe that one, and pick up a different kind of blue. So I've got a mixture of French ultramarine here and the Shevington blue from Old Holland. But any old blue would work. So I just want a few more ripples on my sea. So again, I need kitchen towel just so I can just take a little bit of water off there and I'm going to have a few ripples and you want the ripples to be smaller further away and bigger close to so I'm just going like that and luckily I do have that wax there to help uh, to repel the water and I don't want to go crazy now because the maximum of watercolors is don't fiddle so I'm just going to soften that edge there and here just to build it up right <clears throat> so I'm just going to have to wait for that to dry there uh, before I take off the masking fluid which I'll show you how to do but I'm just going to put some definition in these here clips I've got my little Chinese brush I like it because it's got a really good point and it's not too big and I'm going to be drawing with the brush need some more kitchen towel here we go uh, so I've got a mixture of sepia, which was the original colour, and some Payne's grey, I think. And I'm just going to go in and put some definition in my clips. So I'm not going to go crazy, that might be a bit dark. I'm just going to soften edges to have some more interesting stratas of rock. So up here, maybe here. And you just have to uh, respond to the painting you're doing because um, often you can have a plan and it's just not working so you've got to have a little bit of flexibility in your life and you want to be able to adjust accordingly so I need to maybe define a few rocks over here and again soften that edge with water oops 
don't want to go crazy now, I'm going crazy. So just a little bit. So making it seem more like a rock formation rather than just pink film on paper. Yeah, there we go. Rocks, hooray! And here, I'm not going to bother with actually uh, trying to take that off because that will just ruin that wash completely. It's a little tiny blob I put on there, so always be flexible with watercolour. And I'm going to turn that into another rock, I think. So let's have a little rock here. Take my mind off things. So again, I'm just going to fill it out. Look, it's a rock in water. Whoa, I can make it bigger. Um, so let's have a nice rock doing rocky things. Call that a rock. Right, now I'm hoping that is dry. Everything has to be absolutely dry when you're dealing with masking fluid. So around here, if you feel the paper, it's a little bit cold, it is a little bit cold, but I'll give it a go anyway, because it, uh, because it's a glue, basically, it will take off the surface of the paper if the paper is wet. So I'm just going to rub it with my finger, making sure my finger is clean. Oops. And I'm just going to rub that off. And there you are, there's my reserve little boat. And as you can see, that um, uh, masking fluid is a bit blobby. If I was perhaps doing it uh, myself for a actual painting, I would have been a bit carefuler. But I'm just going to pick up something resembling that sea colour and see if I can just correct that little blob there so it's not glaringly obvious that I made a mistake. There we go. So I'm just correcting. There, and I want to have something going on there. What I also wanted to show you is maybe using a little bit of um, white gouache to actually add areas. I'm going to correct that and maybe correct this. There we are, it's sort of looking like a boat. I might just wet that, and this is going to be a huge mistake, and dab it off so it's not quite so glaringly obvious. And I'm going to have a little bit of fiddle here because often when you look at watercolours, uh, they dry different from what you thought. So this is quite pale. So I'm just going to use this small brush to just go in and add some darker lines. And I'm just going to soften those with water. I think they ended up being very pale because I softened it with a lot of water. But think cliffs. Think rocks. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it now. Ooh, I think I want a little bit more definition just here. Whoa. And again, soften that area with water. Now I can add a little bit more interest to the clouds, although they're pretty good as they are. Um, the way to paint clouds, that's a whole different subject, but you will often see a little tiny bit of yellow ochre knocking, ar knocking around and a bit of paint's grey. So I've got a little palette here of some quite feeble washes. So for instance, so if I go in here with this grey colour and then I'm going to soften that edge because clouds are three-dimensional forms in space so they often have this uh, uh, darker area underneath them but you want to make them fluffy and that involves softening with uh, just water. So I'm just going to make it fluffy, 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 fluffy. And yeah, that's probably a bit too much. And I've got a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of Payne's grey there. And I can go in here. Oh, that's a bit dark. Water, water, water. Just to give them a more three dimensional feel. Yeah. And I think I've told everybody my watercolourist joke. How many people does it take to paint a watercolour? Two, one to paint the watercolour, the other person to tell them to stop. So, and there's another good maxim, always leave a watercolour 10% undone because it, they go off so quickly. Uh, and when every single mark you make, make it worse, just leave it alone. So you can see those clouds now have a little bit of depth. Maybe I want to put a little bit of something going on on this boat. 
So let's have a little, that's a bit too feeble. I'm going to have a little bit of grey, just there. Mm. Give it that sort of feel. I'm trying to think about sunshine on sails. So you can actually do something like that and then I'm going to fill up the other side with the yellow ochre. So we're getting the idea of sunshine on sails. I'm trying to think how it works. This is a trouble with not having an actual resource. If I go like that, just have a little bit of grey there. And I'm fiddling, and I don't know if I'm making it worse, but then <coughs> got an idea of the boat not just being a white shape. Oh, there we are, it's quite nice. Um, and then uh, I'm just going to show you how to use white gouache. So I've got some white gouache here. This is the cheap stuff. I would recommend getting the expensive stuff. This is from Sea White. Oops. And uh, don't use too much of it. It can be useful. It's a very useful tool. It's better than watercolour white, which can be a bit feeble. It won't actually have the effect you want. So people often re recommend using white gouache. So I'm just, and it, all it is is poster paint. It's just a posh French name for poster paint. But from some areas, I want to add maybe some froth around here froth, 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 froth. you see and this is a little bit on the fever side so you see that you can actually add a little bit of white i'm actually having just the white watercolor i just know this is quite a cute cheap gouache let's try that white watercolor this comes in the van gogh set which is quite nice that might actually be better But it does affect um, how watercolours uh, are perceived because what you're doing, you're adding a layer of opaque paint to a transparent glaze and uh, that can make it seem dull because watercolour has this glow. And also I could probably put some waves over here, a few waves, 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 waves. Uh, so we want the idea of surf breaking on Lulworth Cove. And over here, can you see, so I can actually add a little bit of interest with a tiny bit of white gouache, and it's quite used for covering up shushes. There we go. We, in the old days, us illustrators used to have something called contact white, which would cover up everything. I'm just going in here with a little fine line of white, just make it seem like there's surf going on. I could, to some extent, use a dry brush with it to add a bit more sparkle, but I'm not going to go crazy with that because I think it's going to seem, you're going to notice the gouache. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. And you can see you can get nice effects with watercolour, and I do urge you to have a good old play. Um, I look up Jean Haynes on Jackson's website, uh, she's got a very instructive video about painting for the bin. So just letting yourself not be high bound. I've got to produce a gorgeous painting, playing, and then through that play, a creative process will start in your brain, and you can see, uh, you can take uh, those ideas further into paintings you might want to do. So next week it's flowers, and uh, we're going to do a poppy, a lily, and a rose, but we're going to do them really close up. Um, just to get that freedom of painting. And again, uh, look, um, look at the work of Jean Haynes. She has a very nice free flower. Uh, <clears throat> okay, and I will see you next week.